Hi, Beth Neville for Art and Life. We're going to discuss a very interesting uh, set of techniques today that help artists accomplish their goals uh, in painting and in graphic design. Uh, as I've said on other videos, uh, it takes a long time to do artwork and anything that an artist can do to speed up that process, in my opinion, is acceptable. And I also use the motto, there's no cheating in art. If you have a technique that's going to help you accomplish your goals, your artistic goals, uh, just use it. If you can invent another one, go for it. Uh, the invention of photography has really changed uh, art, uh, particularly painting and realistic painting portraits and, and sites that people want to have recorded uh, exactly. So I wanted to start with the uh, protest sign, or not so much a protest, but a plea for uh, civility in our American uh, discourse about uh, racial uh, need to protect uh, people of different races and, and creeds and so on. So my poster, uh, which is uh, on Masonite, is going to go outside on our uh, tree where I traditionally put signs of importance for me. Uh, love brings justice and peace. This is acrylic. Uh, the hands are uh, oil paint. Now, I'm going to show you how uh, I did this uh, port, uh, poster, and then I'm going to discuss a little bit about the techniques I'm using to do my husband's portrait uh, as well. So we're going to shift the camera, which a videographer, my husband Robert Neville, uh, editor Tom Pella, and we will uh, proceed ahead. So how did I proceed? The first thing I did was to get a, a piece of this poster paper, which is so useful and so cheap, and I put it on top of the board that I had because I want to make sure it was the right size. Uh, and then, as I always do when I'm making a, a, a lettering, I start measuring. So using a ruler, I measured three inches, three inches, three inches, and then most important, I find out where the midline is, uh, the midpoint. Then I will take a word like peace is a perfect example. P-E-A-C-E. -E. Six letters. One, two, three, four, five. The A is right in the middle. So I start by designing the A first, then I do the E, then the P, the C, E. So you work from the center out. Let's take justice. This is another very easy one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven letters for justice. Now, the I is going to be shorter in width than the other letters. So therefore, I jiggled the T uh, a little bit over in this direction. So we start with the T, then we do the I-C-E, and then you do the J-U-S there, uh, and so on. Now, how do I get this transferred over to my board? I have a lot of carbon paper. Which, and I can actually see, you probably can't, but I can see on here the words justice and peace. So I inserted this under, imagine the board down here, we're not gonna do it because it's got wet oil paint on it. Then I put this on top, fastened it down with my scotch tape, right? Then with a good sharp pencil, I just go back over it. Now, uh, another thing that I did when I went back over it was to use a triangle and line the triangle up with each letter. If you put the bottom of the triangle on your line where you're establishing your letters, uh, then when you draw this line, you know that it's going to be uh, at right angles to uh, the um, to the, the, your, your baseline. And another thing that's really helpful, uh, it saves time, remember, I always wanna save time. So I went ahead and I did all E, E, I did all the verticals, verticals, vertical, even for the C here, C, C. That will help to lighten it up, uh, line it up correctly, C. And here we go again. Then I can free draw freehand the curves for the C that's fairly easy. Then, when it comes to doing the top of the line, the same thing. You line your T-square up, and you do the E, the I, the T, the top for the S, U, U, and J, and so on. 
And when you do that, it's really going to straighten your lettering out. And you sort of judge. Now, if you're a novice at this, you can actually measure, say, this is three, from here to here. You can measure that. Uh, I just kind of wing it. After all, it's just a poster to go outside. Now, let's take the hands. I knew I wanted to have a black hand and a white hand gripping each other. And I didn't have anybody to model for me. But I did happen to have this hand, which we're going to talk more about later. Uh, this hand was done for Bob's portrait. And I said, well, you know, that's a good hand. And I'll tip it first this way. And then I'll tip it. Let's see, I tipped it this way. And then I reversed it this way. So my first hand went like this. And the second hand went like that. And if we could just flip the camera over really quickly, and we just get it there. So um, here's one hand traced around here, and then another hand, um, yeah, like this. And I had to invent the thumb. It sort of looks a little creaky, but anyway, there's the thumb. So, and then by making the two hands the different colors, I got the symbolism of the, the white and black uh, reaching out to each other. And as I pointed out last week, it did need the blue-green around it because the two hands were not really popping out. So anyway, that's how, without a model, I was very, uh, and I had this left over from working with Bob. I said, great, there's the hand, ready to go. Okay, now we're going to discuss how I am working on Bob's portrait. As I said, it's not done, gotta work on it. But uh, here's the basic portrait. In order to accomplish this, I had Robert dress up in his L, uh, academic gown and go out to our porch, and I took a lot of photos of him. I probably took, oh, 25, 30. I had him sitting in a chair, standing up, all kinds of different poses. And we finally ended up with this portrait uh, uh, that I liked very much. Uh, it, he's holding his book, uh, and he's looking up, has a very nice alert uh, expression. It, it's clear, I knew I could work with it. Uh, so I took this photo over to uh, Staples and had them enlarge it to this size. And happily, that was exactly the same size dimensions, width and height as the canvas I had to work on. So very, very fortunate. Then I made a mistake, <laughs> which has been plaguing me ever since. I put a uh, tracing paper over the portrait, like this, over the whole thing, and traced out all the major outlines, the face, so on and so forth. Then, that was okay. That would have been all right. Then I put the carbon paper underneath, and somehow or other that I still fail to understand, I reversed the design. I had Robert, so he no longer held the book in this hand, he held the book in that hand. Well, the problems that have resulted from this, it's like trying to paint backwards. So every time I look at his hand this way, I have to imagine what it would be like that way. The ring was on the wrong finger. The cover was, was different. His face was tilted a different way. So it really, it's been a, a very, very difficult uh, situation. The original of this portrait, which I like very much, uh, has been shipped down to Morehouse College uh, in Atlanta, Georgia to be displayed in the Martin Luther King uh, Jr. Chapel, International Chapel at Morehouse College. I'm very excited about that and Bob will have his portrait at Morehouse College, which for those of you who don't know is what they call a historically black college, uh, a very important institution at where Martin Luther King uh, studied as an undergraduate before getting his PhD uh, at Boston University, uh, where my husband taught for many years. All right, so let's see if we can find out a little bit more about some of the tricks that I've used uh, in doing this painting. We're going to adjust the camera to a different position. Okay. So here's the original uh, photograph uh, from which I had Staples make the enlargement. Uh, you can see, you see the back of the cover and in the actual portrait, uh, the front of the cover uh, appears. Now I'm using his actual book, uh, Metaphysics of Goodness, 
to be uh, the, the book that is in the portrait. Uh, and, and therefore, I'm copying this directly. Uh, I just look at it and, and copying that cover. So th that's not too difficult. And it wasn't too hard to put the ring on the right, on the other hand, switch the rings around. That wasn't too difficult. Uh, but some of the other things have been very puzzling, uh, particularly the hands. So I finally said, what can I do to get this hand down correctly? For Robert, the big question has been this thumb. This is actually his thumb. The hand extended this way. And, and we have argued, really argued intellectually, uh, about how that thumb should be portrayed in the painting. So I said, well, let me take this photograph, which is embedded in my iPhoto program, and I got that on my computer iPhoto, and I took the hand that was so difficult, and I cropped it, cropped it way down, and then did a print of the crop. Once I had that, then I cut the hand out. So this is the actual size of the hand, uh, blown up many times, and I could compare that with what I had on the portrait. Then, in order to see if I couldn't simplify the, the matter more, I, um, I traced it again, cut out the tracing, because remember, this is going the wrong direction. This is going this way, the hand on the portrait is going this way. So, we have to reverse them. So I traced it and, and reversed it, and ended up with this. So that was a pretty good help in doing the hand. So let's take a look at another area that was very puzzling. Um, and this is a very different portrait of Robert. The, 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 the portrait, the photo portrait just fell down. We will ignore that, okay, just a little startling. Uh, so I got, this is another, I Bob go back out of the porch, and we did this, and again I enlarged it to be the same size as the, um, see there's some paint on it here, a couple of paint smears, uh, as the actual head. And I'm putting this side by side on the oil portrait and trying to figure out, you know, how to do the beard, how to do the eyes, and so on. So this is a life size, same size as the, uh, the actual portrait. One last thing, and then we're going to stop. Uh, you may not recall from the portrait, uh, we'll look at it in just a minute, that I'm doing some icons of Buddha and the snake goddess and the uh, Maitreya Buddha and uh, Celtic cross as motifs uh, to represent Bob's interest in religions. So um, I decided that I wanted to have a dragon uh, down in the corner. So what I did was to take this sheet of paper over there and determine exactly the shape that I had for the dragon. This is how much space I had. So I began kind of fiddling around, trying to figure out what the dragon would look like. Then we went downstairs to Bob's study and got an actual dragon sculpture. And I traced, uh, you know, I, I looked at that. Uh, and the dragon then became something like this, trying to squeeze it into that shape. Uh, then I refined it a little bit more. It helps to do all this work ahead of time because if you just start painting the dragon and it doesn't fit into the shape and you don't know where the feet are going to go, it just wastes time. You have to block it all out and start over again. So it's really important to solve your problems before you get onto the canvas. And you can see I took his scissors and cut out a little draggy here. And then I went to Bob's portrait, stuck it up on the portrait, and traced around it so that I would be able to uh, make sure that it fit into the space. So these are just m some of the many, many techniques, uh, tracing paper, carbon paper, uh, photographic images, images that are reversed. Uh, there are machines that can cast a photograph up uh, onto your canvas, and then you trace around what you see on the canvas. That's a very popular one. So all of these, as far as I'm concerned, are perfectly okay. Uh, it helps you in your creativity, and we're going to end by looking at the dragon. Okay, so here's my tracing of the dragon, and the little dragon as it came out as an icon. So, thank you for watching Art and Life, and next week we'll have an exciting new topic. I believe by next week we're going to be filming outdoors, and we're going to be talking more about how to paint and draw things in nature, particularly flowers, trees, 
uh, rocks, uh, fountains, water, so on. Things that are outdoors. Thank you for watching. See you next week. Beth Neville.